Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video from Radio 1. 94.3 Radio 1, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, back in 2015, uh, in a pre-pandemic world where we could actually think of a world without the mask and where uh, not just uh, our faces but our feelings were also unmasked. There was Britain's Got Talent and on it was a gentleman who came up and sang a song that was uh, by... Uh, I don't know if disco is the right uh, genre, but how do labels matter if you're enjoying the songs? Uh, Robin's uh, uh, song that um, that he made his own, and uh, <laughs> it was on his own that he progressed. Do you see what I did there, Callum? <laughs> I see what you did there, Sartak. <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> the absolutely incredible Callum Scott, whose uh, whose journey caught the imagination of a whole generation on uh, Britain's Got Talent, who's. Uh, whose singing uh, made a home in the heart and uh, uh, and whose performances made you shake your head in wonder uh, is is out with a new single uh, uh, and he's soon going to be out with a new album so it gets even better the second album is uh, is in the works already the first uh, uh, single is out it's called if you ever change your mind no callum we're not going to change our mind about listening to your music at all oh <laughs> so, let's, let's get that out of the way but um, yeah a journey that started in 2015 um for for people who follow you but but the journey has been far longer hasn't it oh yeah i mean you know it's been such a such a whirlwind of emotions these last eight years i would say um you know back in 2015 i was working in human resources um i had applied for a couple of like local competitions um it was my sister originally who um who put me forward for a competition in my hometown here of hall in england um she just she she was always the singer in the family and you know i used to go and watch her perform and just be in awe of how she could stand in front of so many people and bear her heart and soul and and so when i was kind of in my bedroom or in the shower um, like many of us do, I would sing and 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 I didn't think anything of it. Um, and my sister one day uh, heard me uh, singing in my bedroom and she decided to put me in a competition. Um, I didn't have very kind words for her at the beginning, Sartak, I must admit. Um, I did want to kill her for putting me in a competition. Um, but I'm so glad that she did because that just sparked this yearning for for performing on stage um i then applied for britain's got talent in 2015 uh, with my sister she sadly didn't get through um and so having her received four no's from the judges um as you can imagine me as a big brother i was heartbroken for her um but then also had to go on and impress the same four judges so it was a it was a very huge mixture of emotions um, and that audition is now the most viewed audition of its of its history um, and Britain's Got Talent um, and from then I, 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 from the show I think I came sixth uh, and then I went on to work really hard in London, um, found the right people, put the right team around me, eventually released Dancing on My Own as a single which then saw me sign my deal with Capitol Records in LA in the US um and was working on my first album released that and now about to release my second so it's been a it's been a long journey Sartak. it's been a, yeah. a long incredible magical journey but were the hands shaking as much as they were shaking when you were standing on that britain's got talent stage when you were signing the contract as well <laughs> honestly it was that that whole moment for me was I, I just didn't expect it. You know, I, I sang with emotion, I sang with with everything I had, and I didn't think for a second, you know, what what might happen after the audition. I didn't I didn't think about the cameras, I didn't think about the judges. I just sang with everything I had, um, and then you know when Simon pressed his golden buzzer, it was another surreal moment because I was like, no, this isn't this isn't happening. Um, <laughs> And my sister ran on stage and we had a hug and I was saying in her ear, what's what's happening, what's happening? She was like, it's real. Um, and from that moment, it's been a, a pinch me experience, you know, countless times in the last six, seven years um, that I've been doing this job and, you know, incredibly grateful for the people that keep me doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And two minutes, two minutes is all you get to condense all of that emotion, all of that talent, all of those uh, roiling uh, feelings inside of you. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, just thinking about it is tough. How, how, how do you manage? How do you manage? 
I sometimes watch that audition back with friends and family and it still seems very surreal to me. You know, I still don't recognize the person, you know, that I've become because, you know, I, I've, I guess through doing this job, I've become a little bit more confident, a bit more assured, a bit more, a bit more aware, I guess as well. Um, but at that moment on that audition, I was just, cam I was just completely zoned into the performance and, and something that I've tried to do ever since then is every performance that I give, I try and zone back into that because I think, you know, whoever you're performing to, whether it's to a small room full of people, to 60,000 people, you know, to a, a theatre full of, you know, people in front of judges, I think I just try and give the same performance because I think everybody deserves to see that. Um, but it still doesn't stop me from being nervous. Plenty of times I'm on stage and my hands are still trembling and you know I grip the microphone really tight so people don't see that tremble. Um, but I think it just shows you care, right, Satak? That's important. That's very, very important. And wow. Uh, so from uh, team building exercise in human resources <laughs> to, <laughs> to building, <laughs> to building a, a, a two minute capsule of all your emotion to building a contract and a career and an album to now actually recording a second album with the first single out, which is also about a whole lot of emotions churning inside of you. You wanna, <laughs> if you ever change your mind, tell us, tell us, uh, uh, was it a culmination of a lot of uh, things that were happening because there was the pandemic to take care of as well <laughs> during the making of it, no? Oh, Satak, I mean, if you can't already tell, I'm a very emotional person. Um, and so all of my songs are built from that. All of my songs are built from my life experiences. Um, you know, the first album for sure was just, it, it, I was kind of like, I'm, I'm recording artists now and I get to make an album. This is crazy. Let me just, and I was just writing and writing and writing. The second album, I think it gave me time to really craft and really find out what I wanted to talk about on the second album, which is why I'm so excited for its release. Um, if You Ever Change Your Mind is the exact same blueprint as all, all the other songs. It's from a, a real life experience of a relationship that um, was incredible and powerful and I felt like it was forever. Um, and sadly that relationship didn't end very well. Um, but it's it's lasted on me. Um, you know, I talk about in my in in my uh, the creating of my music video that I wanted to signify the the invisible tether that holds you know us two together. You know, however many times we've tried to cut the strings, um, it holds us together. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to that. You know, having that lasting impression, a love that's so deep and so powerful that it that it leaves an imprint on you. Um, you know, and you're kind of sat there thinking, I wonder if we was to give it another shot, would I go back? You know, would I would I entertain the idea of of trying again? And and I think that conflict that people have with a past love um is so relatable. I I can't be the first or last person that has gone through that. And I think that's what really resonates with me on that song is is how widely understood that is. I mean love is the you know the language that we all speak. Um and so yeah I think if you ever change your mind is uh, it's it's conflict and it's it's passion meets you know you want to you want to get away from that person but it's the same person you want to go back to and it's you know it's all that turmoil but it's it's produced in such a beautiful way I worked with Greg Kirsten uh, who just recently wrote uh, Easy on Me with Adele and uh, and we worked on that song together in the production and the music and you know it's much more of a bop than most of my other ballads so it was uh <laughs> It was, it was really fun to to play with new music and new sounds and um and to put something that was very emotional into something that felt you know really uplifting and hopeful and and joyful so yeah it's uh it's all in all it's just a big pot of emotion Sartak. <laughs> I, I i i i can imagine uh, there's <laughs> yeah you know um uh, you talk of Adele. Adele happens to be, I, I believe, uh, one of your biggest icons in, in that way. Um, what she did with her album uh, 30 was incredible, which is that she made Spotify remove the shuffle uh, option because she said that artists make an album with feelings and those feelings need to be heard in their entirety. And if everyone's making music for the TikTok, who's making the music for the generation? And your music also talks to people uh is there uh, is there a little bit of conflict uh, is there a, a conflict between making music for the 30 seconds 
of of TikTok or the 60 seconds and of expressing yourself artistically in that way um where you can uh, where you can actually stretch out what you have to say and and hope for the listener to understand and to give you that kind of time yeah i mean i have mixed feelings about this and my label know all too well how how uh, conflicting this is for me because uh, I, I signed my contract with uh, Capitol Records in 2016 and walking down the corridors of that uh, very iconic record label, you know, I saw Frank Sinatra and I saw, you know, the um, the Beach Boys and Nat King Cole. And, you know, I'm walking through and seeing these names, um, the Beatles, you know, seeing all these names and just being in awe of these legendary status um, musicians and, and, and singers. And I think, you know, when I joined that label, I, I definitely wanted to become, you know, part of that, um, you know, the echelons of those kind of artists where they're, they're creating albums and they're creating bodies of work, you know, where they're really thinking about the song titles and the track listing order and, you know, how the album's going to sound and creating the, the, the journey that you would go on if you was to play it from start to finish. And so I massively resonate with what Adele's saying there is because there's, there's so much there's so much time and so much effort and love that goes into creating a body of work. Um, on the other hand, I'm totally aware that we're in an ever-changing world and, you know, including the music industry and, um, you know, TikTok with it being 30 seconds to a minute's worth of audio, even shorter in some circumstances, is to capture people's attention. I, I know that we're... Uh, we're running out of uh, patience in this day and age. If people want something, they want it now. Um, you know, they listen to your brand new song and they're like, great, let's have the next one. Um, and I think it's just down to, you know, the ever-changing world that we live in. And I think that's why the music that I make, um, I, I stick to my guns. You know, I want to make something that people can sit and really digest. Um, my album has, 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 has gone through lots of changes to make it a little bit shorter, a little bit more punchy. Um, but I've dug my heels in where I've needed to. And I've said, you know, there's there's some songs that are four minutes long. There are some songs that are it's basically a poem. You know, I've, I've got songs on there that I've really tried to express myself artistically because I think like I, you know, like I've said countless times, you have to live and die by the sword in this music industry. And I think, <laughs> you know, the music that I make, I, I, I'm kind of unapologetic with it in the sense that, you know, I don't want to sacrifice um quality for quantity i don't want to make lots of 30 second songs because for me you know my heart beats for you know a really well told story something that really takes you on a journey um you know some of my favorite songs are long and you know and and are drawn out because you sit with it and it's like a you know it's like a it's like a book you know you really want to digest and enjoy it um like I said, conflict attack. I, I understand what's going on with the world of music these days, and I definitely have my pl my part on TikTok to play. But when it comes to my music, I'm definitely somebody who wants to release albums and and records, and you know, have a longevity. You know, the power of belief, as uh, as shown to us very very brightly by uh, the incredible Callum Scott. Uh, we are really looking forward uh, to the album and uh, I'm sure the volumes will be on the are you crazy level so when we play. <laughs> so so thank you very much for your time for your attention and more importantly for those lovely lovely words uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, that you put to melody so beautifully. Callum Scott ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And can I just say as well, a huge, huge thank you to you and to Radio One for allowing me to be interviewed on this station, to be part of your competition. And also, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody in India. I've not actually ever been to India and to have fans there and to have people listening to my music is, is a real honor. So as soon as I am able to travel to India and able to play for you, it would be my absolute pleasure as it would be ours to listen. <laughs> That's uh, Callum Scott, ladies and gentlemen, on 94.3 Radio 1. 94.3 One World, your station.